Hey, it's Ben at Dash 9 Computing, and I thought I'd show you this kind of current project and sort of its evolution as I was working on it and, well, how some of it failed. But it has to do with GPS, uh, not GPS satellites, oh my goodness, uh, but GPS uses satellites like for navigation, we use it for communications, we use satellites for, you know, imagery of the Earth, and hence like why, um, say, like a Google Maps or Street View works. Um, I just think it's super cool, and we're going to use, uh, we're not using a GPS module, we're going to use the internet to pull some information down from a site and map it. Let's check it out. Okay, here we go. Satellite tracker connecting to Wi-Fi. Time is normal. Engaging TARDIS, meet Beacon out. NTP is the network time protocol server. And we should get Epic time back. There we go. That's time from the Epic. I'll explain later. Connecting to Celeste Track and NORAD. Getting the latest two-line element set. Uh, and there it is. Uploading. Okay, there's the world map. And you'll notice the time is in the upper right. And you see these little dots. They're going to start moving, creating lines. And you'll see where the satellites are moving. And they're color-coded. So you've got like the ISS, which is blue. And right there, it's kind of hard to tell right now. You've got Agile. So ISS is the International Space Station. It says Zarya, which is the first portion that went into space. I believe it's a Russian um, unit. And then Agile actually is the red one and it goes across. So <laughs> I don't have the map working as you can tell. So basically picture a globe but kind of unfolded into a single page of paper. To go up to the North Pole, for example, from north to south, you go up over the top and it'll look like um, a curve, like an S curve across the globe. So it'll kind of go like zoop, zoop, zoop. But this red one, Agile, goes straight across, it is following the sun and it's, uh, it's checking on gamma rays. So then you have NOAA 19 and 20, which are weather satellites. And let's see uh, which color, so yellow, that one's, that's NOAA 19 up top. NOAA 20 is orange, that's the next one over down here. And then um, let's see, what do we have? Um, uh, Turtos N, Turos N, excuse me. And then this one kind of goes off the bottom, it's Galileo, uh, uh, GSAT 0101. Uh, is that one on the screen right now? Some of them, you know, I have the, the aspect off a little bit. Basically, this is not actually the meridian here. This is not the center. It should actually be lower because these will go off the bottom of the screen. I didn't get the aspect quite right. I was tempted to actually just squish it so that it wouldn't, it'll draw right over these, but the screen's so small, I figured what the heck. And this little yellow bullseye there is my house. Well, Boston, Massachusetts, basically. Oh, and it looks like is that NOAA 19 is right in there? I think that might be in there right now. Well, we'll find out. No, uh, no, not NOAA 19. Well, something's in there, so that's pretty cool. So that's what it does, and um, I think we should do a time lapse and see what happens. Okay, go telemetry, go. Now, if you look in the upper right, you'll see the clock, and every second, or excuse me, every minute basically takes about one second. So that's kind of cool, right? And um, earlier I was talking about epic time, Epic time refers to the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. And that's sort of when computers, they sort of feel the modern operating system kind of came to life. So satellites travel 18,000 miles per hour, which means in a day they can travel the circumference of the Earth about 14 times, which is pretty wild. And you'll see that as you know, this time elapse is not that long and they're really moving. It's interesting they use less energy than a Prius. That's kind of neat. So there's about 2,500 satellites orbiting Earth. So we'll track six for now. All right. So I'm not going to show the code because it's like 1,600 lines long. But I did just want to show you some of the serial output. This um, WN Auto Connect, um, <laughs> it's kind of cool. It will basically bring up your ESP32 into kind of a access point mode and you can connect to it and then make changes so you can actually connect it to your network. I, did, I just sort of subverted that and just gave it an IP address before that. So, But here's a SPIFS, the file system being initialized, and here's the part where it gets the telemetry that, remember we were talking about the two line elements? Um, so here we talked to Celeste Track, NORAD elements, and we're asking about, here's the um, satellite number, notice here's the satellite, and U just means unclassified. And there's these different values um, that uh, give the, you know, the telemetry of where it is. And so here it talks to the ISS, to the Zarya module. 
it's tracking it. I'm agile. And so this is these are just API calls. We're not talking to the satellites. I think I just said that we were. We're not. <laughs> we're just getting um, output from uh, the satellites that talk to, you know, some sort of central server, and then we're pulling it from that server. Uh, but here they are, uh, NOAA 19, 20, Tiros. Um, just kind of cool to see that. And 